I tripled the effects of my caffeine with no negative side effects. It's a simple trick and doctors don't hate it. Keep watching to find out how it works. Now you must have seen those memes that old people share, don't be cheeky, about how they can't possibly function without their coffee. Well, I used to be like that. I couldn't function in the mornings until I'd had a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. And in the afternoons after lunch, I was good for nothing until I'd had my after lunch coffee as well. In fact, when we'd go out on day trips, I'd have to make a detour to get a cup of coffee or I just couldn't function. It was like I was some kind of walking zombie. I didn't realize it, but I had a caffeine addiction that was a genuine problem for my life. That was until I found a way to triple the effects of my caffeine. Now let's begin by understanding how caffeine really works. There's this myth that it somehow gives you energy, like it's an energy carrying molecule. And that's simply not true. That kind of thing is performed by carbohydrates, like sugars and glucose. Caffeine has a number of effects, but we're going to focus on the psychoactive effects. In other words, the ways that it changes your mood. Now, throughout the day, according to your biological clock or how much energy you've been using, your body will release a chemical called adenosine. And it has many jobs, but one of them is to act as a signal to your body to slow down and take it easy. And that's important because that's how your body establishes proper rhythms throughout the day and it's how your body stops you from overexerting yourself. And to understand how that works, we're going to focus on cells called neurons. They are the cells that make up your nervous system and your brain. Now these neurons have big proteins that span the wall of the cell. Those proteins can attach to adenosine and because they receive adenosine we call them adenosine receptors. When adenosine binds to a special hole in the protein called a binding pocket it sells a signal to the inside of the cell and tells it to slow down. But caffeine has a similar shape to adenosine so it can get into that binding pocket and jam it up but crucially it has a slightly different electronic pattern and that means that it doesn't trigger the signal to the cell. I mean, I'd be antagonized too if someone jammed a molecule in my mouth. Now the caffeine doesn't stay in there forever. It's a reversible process, but it does mean that as long as you have caffeine in your bloodstream, your neurons won't be shutting down as much as your body is otherwise telling them to. And that means that you will be more awake and more alert than you otherwise would be or perhaps should be. So hurrah, thanks to wonderful caffeine, we can all be as awake as we want to be any time that we want to be, right? Wrong. Because our body is a set of incredibly intricate systems that are all balanced against each other. As soon as one of those systems goes out of balance, the others will all adjust themselves to compensate. And that's particularly the case in your brain. If caffeine is continually blocking the signal from adenosine, your neurons will just create more adenosine receptors. And the problem with that is that when the caffeine runs out, You've got too many receptors and the signals to your neurons telling them to slow down are too strong. It's a bit like this. If I start shouting because I think that's a good idea, it's now too loud for the microphone. But so now I have to turn the volume down. But once I've turned the volume down and I talk at a normal tone of voice, it's now much too quiet. And I have to start shouting again just to make things sound normal. Oh, and before we go on, if you're enjoying this video, just click the like button and it'll help out the channel. Thanks a lot. So what all this means for caffeine is very simply that as you drink more caffeine, your body will simply adjust to the new levels. 
So if you go through a period, for example, of working late at night and drinking more coffee that way, or you start drinking those caffeine rich energy drinks, your body will simply adjust to the new high levels of caffeine. And you will have to keep drinking those high levels just to stay normal. In other words, you are now addicted and you find yourself paying out lots of money for ridiculous amounts of caffeine. But you're not even getting back to normal because caffeine awake is not real awake. But caffeine isn't the only aspect of coffee addiction. The other force is very powerful. It's the force of habit. You know, the I'll just have a coffee before I start work or the I'll have a cup of coffee at four o'clock because that's what I always do. These impulses are very strong and they're very difficult to kick. You see, your brain has become conditioned to feeling stress at not having that cup of coffee and it's become addicted to that little dopamine kick of pleasure when you have that desire satisfied. And if you're a procrastinator, that stress will make your procrastination impulse stronger. And not getting the dopamine kick of receiving your coffee will make it harder to get over that impulse. Now we get to the trick. Very simply, you switch to decaf. I told you it was simple, didn't I? Now we can understand how decaffeinated coffee can multiply the effects of caffeine for you. Firstly, it reduces your caffeine levels in your bloodstream. That means that your body can return your adenosine receptors back to normal. And for me, it took me about two days to get over the desire for caffeine and I started to feel so much more awake. I felt a level of alertness that I hadn't felt for years. And that's because being caffeine awake is not being real awake. You know this if you've ever stayed up late working or if you've ever had jet lag. Caffeine will keep you kind of zombie awake, but not really awake. And the second aspect of how it works is that you can keep all of your old coffee habits. That means you can still say to yourself, I'll get on with that really boring job just as soon as I've had a cup of coffee. And that is a real neurological response. Now, it's not completely easy, but it's certainly not as difficult as coffee addicts think it would be. Certainly, these days, you can get really nice tasting decaffeinated coffee that I personally can't tell from the caffeinated version. But at the top of this video, I promised you that switching to decaf would triple the effects of caffeine. So what do I mean by that? Well, I haven't quit caffeinated coffee completely, but what I do now is I will have a third of a cup of caffeinated coffee in the morning just to get me started, and then maybe another third or a half of a cup in the afternoon. But now I am drinking so little caffeine that it clears from my system before my body recognizes it as a problem. But that caffeine now in my system, even that low level, will still give my body a kick of activity and gives me a boost of alertness to get on with whatever work I want to do. And yes, decaffeinated coffee is more expensive than caffeinated coffee, but you simply need less of it. Now, you only need to drink coffee when you want coffee. You control the coffee, not the other way around. And more than that, you certainly don't need to drink a litre of coffee just to feel normal. Now, there is one small warning, which is that if for some reason you start drinking a high level of caffeine again, again, you might be working long hours at night, might be jet lag, your body will readjust to the high levels of caffeine. So you're gonna to have to wean yourself off it all over again. But if you're ready to do that, you can expect years of being more awake and more alert and getting more benefit from your caffeine. So there you go. If you found this topic interesting, I've left some links in the description and you can go and have a deeper look. So how about you? Do you have a crippling caffeine addiction? Do you have any hints 
for giving up caffeine? Are there maybe any other drugs that you would like us to cover in detail? Let us know in the comments and I'll see you next time.